Hello everyone, this is an impromptu video, uh, just a little thing I needed to get out of my head. I want to recall a time where I worked on a Windows 98 machine when I was a cable installer back in eh, 2002, 2003. Worked on a Windows 98 machine that had been infected with something. And the way that I sped this machine up was to copy a bunch of files from one directory to another directory and then rename that directory to the original directory. So what happened is C Windows System contains the vast majority of the Windows system on Windows 98. So what we saw here is this thing infected it, it made tens of thousands of junk files in C Windows System. Now here's the problem. We're talking about computers that are largely pre-2000, pre-Windows XP, hard drives that sequentially can't go much faster than, say, 15 megabytes a second at absolute maximum speed. And when they're bogged down, it's less than a megabyte a second. Very, very slow compared to even just a Windows XP machine or a, a machine that came with XP new. So this machine... Normally, Windows 95, 98, whatever, in the system directory, they would have hundreds of files, but you would not normally have thousands of files. Um, I can't remember the exact number, but it was nowhere near what you see today in Windows 10, System 32, or SysWow 64. <clears throat> but that's okay, because, you know, we're talking about Windows 10 being on machines with hard drives that can do sequential reads of 90 megs a second. We're talking about Windows 95, 98, whatever, on 15 at absolute best. And random access kills the performance. So what happened with this computer is the virus dumped tens of thousands, literally tens of thousands of junk files into Windows System 32. But because of the format they followed, it was very easy for me to select them and delete them in one huge bundle. Now here's the other problem. Once this malicious thing was deleted, and all the garbage this malicious thing put on the computer was just gone, the computer was still absolutely dog slow. Now, why was it dog slow? I deleted tens of thousands of files from the system directory that has the Windows system in it. So, with them gone, surely it would be faster, right? No. And here's why. When you have a directory and you create files in that directory, it makes an entry for every file. So Windows might have, a, say, a thousand files in the system directory, just as an example. If you add 20,000 files and then delete them immediately, those file entries do not get culled from that directory. So if you delete the 20,000 files, on, at least on Windows 98 at the time, and a lot of other systems too, the directory doesn't have those ends that were added to it to make room for additional file entries cut off. See, directories are technically just files. They are a very special kind of file that lists off names and addresses for other files. But they are still technically files. They are still blocks of space used on disk. And every chunk of entries has a certain size and it continues to allocate more disk blocks for more entries. So when you add 20,000 files to a directory that has 1,000, you now have a 21,000 file directory. But what happens when you delete the last 20,000 files there? It marks the entries in the directory as deleted and then on Windows 98, which uses FAT, the file allocation table those areas of the file allocation table get changed to unused. So it unlinks the chain in the FAT, which is how you reclaim the space, and then it marks the directory entry as unused so that it just doesn't show up in the directory. But now here's the problem. It's still a directory entry. It's still there. It just has a deleted flag or an unused flag set. So it's still taking up the same space, but it's marked as unused. So technically, if you look through a directory to try and find a particular file, any, any particular file, it doesn't matter, 
it starts at the first directory entry and it keeps loading directory blocks and then scanning each entry in that block, next block, scan the entries in that block, and so on, until either it finds the thing it's looking for or it exhausts all of the entries. When you have a thousand and then you add 20,000, you have 21,000 entries to scan through before you have exhausted all the entries. Now, yes, they're all marked deleted, but the system doesn't know that until it reads the entries and sees them marked deleted. So there's no way to optimize it away. So what I did to make this computer go from horrifically dog, awful, slow, to back to normal speed was I dropped to a DOS prompt, which means Windows wasn't running and locking any files, went to the Windows folder, I made a new directory called, say, X, and then I moved everything, every single file and folder from System 30 or from Windows System to Windows X. Then I deleted System and renamed X to System. This was a lot easier back in the day because FAT doesn't have security and permissions, whatever. So it, it's just straight files and folders, and that's the end of it. So what I did was I created a new folder, and that new folder only had entries for whatever it was that I put in it. So by copying everything to a brand new folder, this new folder only had entries that were allocated for the new stuff coming in. That means that if I copied a thousand files or I moved a thousand files out of this 21,000 entry directory into this brand new one, it would create the thousand entries needed and that's it. And then delete the old folder, those 21,000 entries in that folder are also just tossed and the new folder only has a thousand to look through. In modern days, I have a shell script I use on my servers when I deal with uh, particularly large number of files, like say I archive a YouTube channel that I haven't archived before, and they have a thousand videos. Well, if I encode those videos, then what ends up happening is the directory, um, I'll encode the videos, and the videos get moved to an encoded subfolder, and that encoded subfolder has the video content now, not the original. But the problem is I put anywhere between one and 5,000, depending on how much metadata there was, entries into this folder and now all the data is in the subfolder but the folder that contains it all still has 5,000 entries. So I have a shell script called refresh directories. It takes every directory, it makes a new one, moves the contents to the new one from the old one, deletes the old one, renames the new one to the old one. And in some cases it makes no difference but when you've had that kind of churn where there's a bunch of stale entries just sitting there, it can actually make a pretty big difference when you do big bulk file operations to clean that directory out. So I want you to think about that if this is a situation you've ever encountered, if you do system administration, if you do computer repair, this may be something that explains a performance problem. And a lot of people don't think about this, but this is one of the reasons it's important to understand what's going on under the hood so that you know that this is happening and you can deal with it appropriately. I hope that you've learned something from this. If you have, you know, there's like links down in the bottom where you can support me. I'd love that, but you know, share the video with anybody you think would appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching and have a good night. Or day. I guess everywhere in the world is a different time zone, so have a good. Take care. I can't I can't hit the stop button.